I have started it. I have forgotten to switch on the button. Oh, I'm sorry. So for those who is going to watch this um, show in uh, the recorded version, uh, so we took the thick cardboard, uh, then we applied the gesso, thick gesso. You need to wait until it dries. Uh, then I applied a very beautiful um, color of the paint. It looks like uh, blue or gray at the moment, but it is a very beautiful um, <clears throat> color and it is called Min Julep. We have um, I can, we had a conversation that it looks like mal malachite, malachite, I don't know still how to pronounce it correctly. It's like a precious stone. It's uh, the dimensional thick paint by Art Anthology. And um, uh, we have, we have, I have applied it using my palette knife. And uh, I put some paint and some parts are left uncovered with the gesso also with the paint and I dried it. Uh, though uh, this paint dries very fast, just one, two minutes and you have a dry surface. And our next step is we need to take the light or any paste you have it can be a texture paste paste but i uh, chose the light paste by art basics by prima because it is really light it's even light in the uh, bottle and uh, it dries almost also fast not so fast as the super heavy gesso or the um, art anthology paint but anyway it dries quite quickly and again you need to take your palette knife or a plastic coat if you have it and you need to cover again not the whole surface but almost 80-75% of the cardboard you have and pay attention to the edges of it you need to take the axis and spread it over the entire surface so uh, because it's not so very white it looks white in the um, in the jar, but uh, by applying it, you see that it's a bit it's opaque. But uh, while applying it, uh, it's a bit translucent. And now uh, it's not very easy for you to see the difference because we have put the gesso before and then the paint but please <laughs> believe me it's more uh, transparent than the ordinary paste i have prepared uh, another sample for you and I have already applied the gesso. I skipped the step with the paint and uh, after that I applied the uh, this light paste and uh, uh, the only uh, white color you see I will try to to show you uh, these are the areas uh, covered with the gesso and you see how uh, this one is not so very uh, white because it's covered with this light paste and uh, it's like an opaque feeling but no very much of the white color okay
Okay, so again, you can take uh, the um, heat tool and dry it, or in my case, I will put it aside because I have already prepared this sample. And let's try uh, another technique without uh, applying the paint uh, between the layers, between gesso and the texture paste. Uh, so there are two options. You may uh, apply gesso, then the paint and then the texture pa paste, or you can uh, apply gesso, uh, the texture paste, and only after that you can play with your uh, paint or any color. Okay. So, I think that I want to try not the green one, because I have already tried it on this card, but I would take uh, one more beautiful color from this dimensional range of paints and it's again Art Anthology oh, It cannot focus very well So you need to believe me and uh, Mardi Gras it is the color. It is very deep purple, I would say, and I would like to try it. This is, you see, on the uh, bot uh, bottle ca cup, uh, the true color of it, but again, it's 10 p.m. there and uh, it's quite dark and because of the electricity, electric, electric, so, okay, it's not the daylight and uh, the uh, true colors are quite different and as you can see it right now, it's really dark, but uh, keep in mind where then that these paints are quite um, are transparent and they have um, no full coverage and it's really great. Uh, for our um, for for my idea, I would say. So you see, I'm spreading it, and because the um, the paste, the texture paste, has already dried, so uh, the color is kept on those parts where the um, the text paste is um, how to explain it correctly so on the top of the text paste areas covered with the text paste so you see it's absolutely different when you are applying uh, the the paint on the gesso and when you are applying the uh, paint on the uh, texture paste so these strokes are due because these are the layers of the texture paste and I cannot cannot apply it I, I still can but it's quite hard to put it between the uh, I'm still trying to find the correct word how to explain it between the layers of the texture paste, I would say so, sorry. So, this is the difference. When you are applying it on the gesso layer, 
it's it looks more like smooth smooth and when you apply it on the texture paste it's more like rustic I would say okay so I spread it and again now we need to dry it and uh, keep in mind that these uh, paint dries also quite fast but uh, for more smooth uh, look I would use my finger and just spread some color between the texture paste areas and you see it's like an embossed uh, sapphires and uh, the the paint uh, is layered quite differently it is the on these areas it is more smooth on this is on these ones is not so so you can variate depending on what you want to reach okay and if you feel that you have applied uh, <laughs> yes thank you Rika it's modern art if you feel that you have applied too much of the paint and you don't like it uh, first we will cover it with another layer of the paint or you can take again baby wipe and you see due to the uh, gesso and the texture paste too you can still remove the excess and it looks more light not so very bright and dark okay i think i need to take another baby wipe and you see i want uh, some of the parts um to look more with the uh, white splashes or white areas so it's okay for me so while applying the gesso the texture paste and the paint you need to keep in mind that you don't need to have a full coverage uh, you need to variate and regulate the application of your mediums and especially it's very important for the paint and you see uh, this paint has some uh, I would say shimmery effect and um, it's not it's not like a glitter but uh, I'm not sure you can see it very well but it uh, changes the color and it has some maybe golden shimmering and uh, the color changes depending on the light <laughs> yes baby art is a very a perfect tool for us and you see i can take the uh, excess i have removed from this cardboard and uh, while it is still uh, the baby wipe is still wet you can make some wiping on this cardboard too because the um, the texture paste is not dried uh, perfectly at the moment and i need to take again my heat tool because for a perfect result you need to uh, to dry each layer completely
So let's check it. Yes, it has dried. And we can apply another layers. And I have uh, told you um, at the beginning of the show that I want to try two colors. So uh, one part of the uh, my of my cardboard is going to be only green, and on the other part I'm going to test uh, one more color. It is purple. So uh, in case not to To mix them, I will cut it in half and uh, I'm going to use one for only one color and the other for some more because it is quite thick, not uh, all the trimmers can work with this thick cardboard well, so I'm using my knife okay uh, you see the size are different so this one is going to be used for one card and this one for another card so because they are of the different uh, sizes so <clears throat> at this stage I will um, keep this away and for this I'm going to apply the purple and again you can use your palette knife or you can use your finger and uh, I would say that it's better to even Oh, let's try to take the uh, the brush. You see, uh, it's not so very smooth. And because of the texture we have due to the texture paste, not sure that you can see it very well, but these are the texture dimensional parts and the paint uh, holds is hold it there quite well. Hold it, not hold it, it's held, I'm sorry. Someone told me that at the beginning of the show about my good English so you see it's not so very good I'm still uh, making so many grammar mistakes because I think that grammar is the most difficult for the foreigners and uh, I guess it is for all the languages let's, let's ask Rika about her grammar is it easy for you to speak without any uh, grammar mistakes? Okay. So these are the colors, so I mixed uh, <coughs> purple and uh, mint green together and uh, uh, it's okay that they are quite different because we will cover them with uh, one more paint. <laughs> Ah. 
I guess that grammar is really an issue for everyone, especially when your own language, when your native language um, has absolutely uh, different grammar rules. And uh, especially for Russian and for English, they are absolutely different. And for instance, to have three forms of the verb, uh, there is not such a... Um, so in Russian you don't have such uh, form verbs, but you have more than um, three. You have <laughs> I don't even um, tell you how many of them at uh, at the moment <laughs> because yeah, I have left school so many many years, and I need now to repeat it with my uh, daughter because she has. Uh, grammar uh, classes in um, in the school so but it's really difficult and it's an issue for me and it is always makes me uh, feel blush when I'm cannot find the correct word or I'm using the incorrect form of the verb because I still uh, hear the voice of my teacher who told us you need to learn it you need to learn it <laughs> I'm just reading what you have <laughs> wrote at the chat. <laughs> okay. Yes. You're right, ladies. So Uh, do you remember that I didn't write with the heat tool and you see that the uh, paint uh, has already dried quite fast uh, this was dried with the heat tool but I uh, haven't applied um, none of the purple color there and and uh, for this sample I combined uh, two colors of the paint and uh, we will check uh, what uh, uh, variant is the best one <sighs> Rika, what are those three words that you know in Russian? Thank you, Julian. Thank you for my English. Okay. I have forgotten what I really need to do next. Oh, yes. What we are going to do next is that we need to make uh, the... Oh, I cannot remember this word. So, we need to make the imitation of the wooden uh, background. So, I need to cut my uh, cardboard into the, onto the stripes. Strips, stripes. <laughs> again, again, I cannot remember how to pronounce the words correctly. Uh, and... Uh, in Russian, we have the measurements in uh, centimeters, so um, it doesn't really matter uh, for you to cut uh, those cut uh, this cardboard into the strips um, uh, precisely. It's uh, I'm doing it uh, not measuring, but uh, try to be. Um, more precise in doing them uh, of the same size. I would say that in centimeters it is about one centimeter and a half. So I guess that in uh, inches it is about. I really don't know how it is, how how many it is. But uh, I will check then. Okay, ladies, because I, I'm not sure about the... Oh, I will ask Rika to help me and to check how much, uh, how many it is uh, in inches 
one centimeter and a half. If Rika helps me eat, I would appreciate it a lot because I'm not very, uh, I have already told you, I'm not very good in uh, inches measurements. Okay, so I'm cutting it. And I would say that um, depending on the size of your card, how long or how um, wide it is, you can regulate uh, the, um, the width of your boards. Half an inch, maybe. I'm not sure. But I have already told you, it is not really um, important. For instance, if you are using um, a cardboard, uh, a cardstock as a base for your card, and uh, if it is um, like this, you it's better to use this size. If you are going, if you are going to use the smaller piece of the cardboard, so you can uh, make it more, mm, not not so wide. They can be shorter. Not shorter, narrow. Narrow. Yes, they uh, need to be more narrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. My mat is only in centimeters, so that is why I cannot check it. It has only centimeters. I'm sorry, it's a new, it's a European version. Okay, so I'm cutting it. So you see, I'm not uh, make the precise measurements. But I'm doing it almost of the same size. I have also a paper cartel, or paper trimmer, and it has centimeters and inches. And uh, it's quite easy to check, but I don't have it on my hand at the moment. So that is why I, I asked Trick and thank you that you have checked it for me. Okay, so this is the base for our wooden background and we need to distress it and before I go into you to do it I would like to show what we can do one more is an option so um, you see you can cut it before the next um, layer of the paint or you can apply one more uh, paint layer I am searching where is my paint okay I will take uh, uh, one more acrylic paint uh, it's more liquid. I took it just uh, I only like the color of it as I wanted to create a more rustic and natural uh, wood, Wooden look that is why I took the brown 
but you can experiment and take any other color really and uh, I'm going to apply it you see before I have cut it it seems that it has dried so and I'm taking again the bristles the bristles paint still don't know how to pronounce it and you see it's quite it's more liquid uh, than the uh, art anthology paint and I'm going to cover almost the whole surface just leaving some areas uncovered you see and it's very important that your pay uh, your brush is not wet it needs to be uh, dry because if you put any uh, water and um, so your paint is going to be more liquid and for this technique uh, we really need a very rustic look and so everything is uh, needed to be very dry and not smooth okay so I'm covering it and while applying it uh, pay attention that some of the areas are needed to be covered I need it to have a full coverage and the others just only just a small touches of the paint but not the full coverage okay okay and uh, at this stage it is very very important that uh, it the, it dried completely so again if you don't want to wait you can take your heat tool or if you are preparing uh, those cardboards for instance in the evening so you can wait for the whole night and then check in the morning and I think that the result will be perfect okay this is for this cardboard and now I'm taking the other one and again I'm covering it with the brush it is not wet And again, you see that uh, those parts that are covered with the texture paste, they are like dimensional. I'm searching for the angle to show you better this. And uh, the paint, it is holded by these textured um, areas and it is still uh, not so easy to cover the areas between it that are not covered with the texture paste or, the, or even if they are not very dimensional I'm not sure that you have guessed the idea I wanted to explain to you but uh, maybe you can um, watch then the result and you can fix it Thank you, Julian, that you see. I'm happy that you have noticed that. Okay. So this cardboard is not really um, natural and it is not so very uh, of a rustic style that I wanted to show you today. But I really uh, wanted to experiment with the color. 
that is why I'm using it at the moment and I really like purple it is one of my favorite color I mostly um, do not uh, use quite uh, usually the green I only use it in winter because I have one of a very beautiful I have very beautiful earrings uh, with the green and um, one uh, blouse dark green <laughs> um, but uh, in other days I don't wear green because I think it's very uh, difficult color for me So, <laughs> thank you, Reika. Thank you, Julian. I'm so rude. I haven't asked if some of the Russian um, crafters are watching me, and I didn't tell them. Привет. По-русски, если кто-то смотрит меня, пожалуйста, отзовитесь, потому что я стала говорить только по-английски. So I talked uh, to, um, I appealed to uh, my Russian readers, not more only my, but for Russian uh, crafters, because I have started speaking only English, 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 and it was not so very polite from for me, but... If someone is from Russia there, please type me a hello. Okay. This is the cardboard. And uh, it is going to be dried. And I'm not sure, but I want to show you that some of the areas, uh, they look like Crackly, crackle, crackle. Because uh, it was um, the texture play paste was applied more heavily on those areas, and you can get uh, very uh, distinctive crackle effect, and you can do some circle movements. And you can again take your baby wipe if you think that you have applied much of the paint and remove it. But keep in mind that you can smooth the surface and it won't be so rustic as if you want it to be. Yes, green is, is a difficult color. But I think that it has some magical uh, feeling uh, the same as the purple and the combination of the green and the purple for me it's like some some magical though they are very difficult for me especially deep purple so I guess <laughs> that the um, rock band deep purple has had such name because they wanted to appeal of some serious, maybe music or serious poetry they have used. A prayer. I think that uh, if you use a prayer, yes, it, it will smooth and uh, um, it will get a more smoother um, application. But in this technique, you need to get more rustic and distressed look. So for this case, it's better to use the thick paints, not liquid, to use the palette knife and uh, to use the um, this kind of brush bristles, bristles, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yes, 
Yes, Velvet. You're right, Rika. The, uh, the combination of deep purple and deep green, it's like really some uh, velvet. A great feeling, I think. Okay, well, I have been chatting with you. My uh, paint has almost dried, but uh, to be sure completely, I will use um, my heat tool again. So, they are dried completely and as for those that we have already cut before, I would suggest you, or I would suggest me, to me, me, to me, again, grammar, grammar mistakes, <laughs> I would suggest you to apply just um, the brown uh, paint just uh, not on all of them but for instance just only on some of them maybe three or maybe two Uh, don't be afraid that we I have that we yes I <laughs> I'm still uh, talking as I'm on the class and uh, you will um, all of you uh, are doing the same <laughs> and I'm not the only one but uh, I applied uh, the um, uh, brown paint on the strips and uh, you see that uh, it is it is not a full coverage but it is almost a full but then we will use a distressing tool to remove uh, some of the parts so it's okay okay three of them are covered and three of them are not, I'm just only cleaning my brush, that is why I'm covering the pores too. Okay. And our next step is, as I have started with the green, I'm sorry it will take me more time to cut them, but I really like to cut just some parts of them just to show you what we are going to do. And you need to wait for it. I have already told you. Oh. I'm sorry that my cardboard is quite thick and my trimmer uh, it cannot cut it well. That is why I'm using the knife. But if your trimmer is a, is an excellent excellent cutter, you, I think that you can cut it in it. For me, it's easier to do it with the knife. Okay. I will 
put this aside and take this Not so very close to those fingers, it's okay. It seems that I'm moving the camera again. The ruler. So, just a few of them because I want to show you what we need to do. Let's check the paint. It dried. Okay, it's great. So, not to make uh, you confused, I will divide those that are longer with uh, from those that are from the different cardboard and at this stage uh, I need to take I really don't know how to call it in English it's a kind of distressing it's like an abrasive uh, so uh, you can use any distressing tool you have in my case I'm using this one so the uh, the function of this is to remove some of the paint and we need to make the scratching sandpaper thank you yes it is the sandpaper and uh, it's better when it is more mm, not very fine but more mm, <laughs> not huge but not fine uh, the medium the medium sandpaper so and you need to take <laughs> how it is pronounced in Hungarian smirgli or smirgli I, I guess that's smirgli what a lovely word yes it is really <laughs> smirgli uh, I think that you are going to laugh uh, because I will uh, now type for you how it is called in uh, Russian it's very very funny uh, it is pronounced like Nazdachka it is like this Naz... Nazdachka it is in Russian or a sand paper. Nazdachka. It is in Russian. Smirgli. It is in Hungarian. Uh, and uh, sand paper. It is in English. What is a smigo? I also don't know what uh, Rika is, is speaking about. So I'm taking this Nazdachka or a sandpaper. What is this go golem? <laughs> Smigo golem. I'm not aware of it at all. Okay, then I will Google it. Okay, and what you need to do is to remove some parts of the paper, oh, of the paint. 
especially the brown one we have used. Are you left handed, Rika? So you are doing this uh, paper sanding. Yes, I see now. Golden Smigo, that is. <laughs> so you see that uh, some of the parts are removed. And it uh, gets the look of a rustic one. My hobby is left-handed too, Julian, but my kids are not left-handed, though we guessed that our daughter would be a left-handed. Okay, so quite simple, you see? Let's try the other one, this one. And also, uh, you can use uh, the candle before sanding uh, the sapphires. So after your paint has dried, uh, you can uh, scratch the candle on some parts, then cover it with the, in my case, brown uh, paint, and after then you can sand it. And uh, those parts that they have been covered with the candle, uh, uh, the brown paint uh, will be removed, and you see, you see, you will get the initial, uh, in this case, purple or the green color. But. Yes, <laughs> it has been left out in the weather for a quiet time. It's a very simple and but very cool technique and you see that you can regulate uh, the uh, intensity of the colors, the intensity of the sorry, the intensity of the uh, dimension and the texture using your texture paste. And uh, again, uh, uh, I think that the um, kind of the adjuster you use uh, is very important. So I uh, highly recommend you to use something super heavy or heavy. You need uh, it, it. It needs to be very thick, really. So you need to uh, scratch and uh, sand it all over the boards and I especially very interesting how it's going to be cool on those that uh, I have mixed two colors Oh, Julian, you have made the crochet. I, uh, I'm so impatient. I have started so many times doing it when I was a kid, a child, or even a teenager, and I haven't uh, finished it every time. It's an issue for me, really. And especially that you t taught someone who is left-handed. <laughs> you are great. I think that you are a great teacher. So 
so I'm removing the uh, brown paint So this is what we what we've got. When you're using a candle between uh, the layers of applying the uh, paint, uh, the final layer of the paint, uh, you can get more clear image of the initial uh, paint. I need to clean my surface, sorry. And at this stage, I'm going to take uh, the Distress Ink or and a blending tool. Or for the greens, I have um, mixed media inks. Uh, by Clear Snap, really like them also because they have more intense color than uh, the distressing. And this one, it looks, uh, it is called Verdigris, it's very rich green. Someone has wrote awful. I thought that Julian <laughs> uh, told me that this color is awful. Yeah, yes, I see that it's for another conversation. Okay, so I took brown, green, and uh, and the purple. So uh, all the same colors as I have used uh, with my paints. And I'm starting with the purple and I'm working for those that have been covered only with the purple. So you need to distress and cover with the ink the edges of the boards <laughs> and again paying attention to those uh, textured areas it's great to cover them and they uh, start looking more bright you see? Oh, it's a perfect. You see? How cool is this? Isn't it? All I have uh, needed to do is just to to put it more closely to you. Okay. I have told you about those textured parts and now you see them quite well. And while uh, making the blending in, in, in ink blending, uh, you need to pay attention to the edges and to the uh, to those textured parts. How stupid I was! I didn't know that all I all I need to do is just to put it more close to you. Sorry. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. And let's try uh, 
on the cardboard that has the green the mint green and the purple again I'm taking my blending tool and you see those covered only with the with the gesso it cannot focus on those parts that I prefer no oh. so you can uh, if you feel that it is too white for you you can cover it then with the inks and again especially the edges it will look more natural if you use the mm, if you distress the edges perfectly and uh, just if you want the textured parts and the the others covered only with the with the paint oh yes you see it's almost like the like the really like a wooden a wood okay and let's try the uh, the other colors let's try this one mardigree verdigree mardigree oh sorry someone is we have used something it was mardigree ah yes it was this one purple mardigree and uh, now we am going to use verdigree so many new words for me but it reminds me mostly of the French <laughs> yes thank you Rika so I'm using the green uh, it's very very bright so be uh, very accurate with this you see Ach. it cannot focus well yes it is so we can put on those parts that for instance your green is is very um, dull for you so you can put more of the bright green and even on those parts covered with the purple it again gets a very vibrant vibrant look if you add in it and mix it so uh, when you uh, have prepared all of your um, strips uh, it's very very important to distress them in that case you will get a um, more uh, realistic look as it is as it is as if it is the wood for instance this one is not a distressed one and you see the difference this one is not distressed no oh and this one is more is distressed this one looks like a wooden board and this one I wouldn't say yes the more layers you applied the more fantastic and uh, unpredictable result you will get <laughs> and I think that you can um, uh, have an evening just layering layering and dinking and dinking <laughs> just to get a very small uh, cardboard background for your card but um, the enjoyment and the, the joy the enjoyment some new words for me 
uh, and the um, uh, therapeutic feeling when applying it I think it's really great okay this one for the green so you see that you can combine very uh, bright inks I'm not sure that some pastels or light inks will work great on this technique but I guess that you can try and I would combine on this part two inks brown and uh, not violet not purple but uh, green green and uh, and brown so I'm taking another color it's um, Sparrow. Oh, it's okay. Oh, by the rock. Hairdresser. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining me today. You can then get the uh, recorded version. I guess that this color is not so very um, bright, but I cannot find the other one I have prepared. It was more dark, but okay. So I think that you have got the idea what I wanted to explain for you today. I thought that I would show you how to embellish the card but I think that you have spent with me so, ma so much time but if you wish I can show you how to, to make a very fast embellishment embellishing so this is uh, brown oh, brown ink and the green one. Oh yes it is so I can play all night long with these colors really really great effect I will try to do it more quickly because I really want to show you how to embellish the card and a uh, very easy way how to glue them together <laughs> you are not going anyway okay thank you Julian oh I have found another ink it is more dark it is truffle it was straight before me yes you see truffle thank you ladies i'm glad that you have like it let's try this one you see it's more dark and um, really distressed cool you see absolutely like a natural wood and it, no, it's not shimmering, the uh, inks are smooth and that is why while they are wet they change their, col their color oh, I cannot stop pinking and inking absolutely amazing <laughs> I think that I'm going to do it all night long 
but I understand that you are waiting for the results. And for instance, for this one, I have covered it mostly with the green ink. Mm -hmm. And to make it look more, more natural, because you know there are no uh, purple wood in the um, in real life. That is why you can uh, smooth the green color, just add in more dark over the brown. I will take um, a photo for you tomorrow during the daylight because it is absolutely beautiful and I am really happy that I have tried uh, those two very difficult colors the green, the dark green and the deep purple and uh, let's check tomorrow <laughs> during the daylight how it looks in real life Yes, it is almost uh, midnight, but it's okay for me. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. I'm happy to be here with you. Though I had a very uh, sleepless night before. Yesterday. I don't want to go to sleep because it's... Uh, I. I highly recommend you to try this inking and this technique. Even if you don't have idea what cut you are going to create, just adding and mixing the paint so therapeutic, so relaxing. Okay. Uh, so, our boards are ready. It is almost like wood, natural wood and what we need to do next is to adhere them to the uh, card base so I'm taking the where is my card base here it is oh you are lucky in Canada it is only 3.45 p.m. Rika, I think that we have two hours difference with you and you have only you are only about 9 p.m. Oh don't pay attention it was it was the wrong card but okay so what you need to do is to adhere it and while adhering to your card base ah, so one more tip uh, it's cool when your um, edges are straight but if some of them are not straight and not perfect it, it, it is also okay because we, we are preparing a very rustic card so um, I need I will need to cut my card base later but I want really to show you how to adhere it just a, a simple tip I guess that you can do it yourself and you know about it but I need to show you so I'm using a very uh, strong adhesive it's a Russian glue I I would say that um, any strong adhesive that you're mm, you're using and you're sure in it it's better to use it so while adhering you need to keep a small area it's about one two millimeters in my measurement I don't know how much it is in uh, how many it is in much many again grammar grammar mistakes ah uh, yes one hour apart i thought that we we have with rika two hours 
Oh yes, okay, one hour. So thank you, Rick, that you are, you don't sleep, <laughs> you don't sleep uh, this night with two. And while adhering the second one, just leave all, just leave. Uh, one millimeter between you see not very close to to uh, one of each but you need to keep a very very narrow area in that case you will get a more natural look and press firmly while adhering it yes thank you Thank you for the interest measurements. But now I don't know how to pronounce it. One um, and the sixteenth, I guess. I have never had a chance to pronounce it correctly. Okay. Very difficult when for me it's very difficult when it comes to the numbers really i'm not very good at math and calculate in cal calculating <laughs> i'm not uh, such kind of person so i'm sorry but i have um, an announced it for those who is going to watch the show in the recorded version I hope that they can get the idea <laughs> thank you ladies yes no it's not good and because my cardboard is very very thick I need to apply a very thick layer of the adhesive and then just press very firmly and it's better when you keep as I have already mentioned the holes between the the boards you see this is the whole okay I think that I won't uh, go into not go into To put all the boards on the base I will cut the excess and will show you just some idea how you can embellish it I have one uncovered so there is the difference not sure that <clears throat> you will see it perfectly this one I haven't inked it 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 is only covered with the paint but no uh, distressing effect with the inking you see My. yes you are right uh, a nail width uh, i think it will be great of course if you um, keep it more than a nail width i'm not sure that it will get the, the natural look 
these uh, boards they are covered with the they are inked uh, I inked the edges and I inked the um, the sapphires yes you see the difference okay this is what I wanted to show you so if I put it there uh, with no inking it, um, it's very obvious that it is not inked that is why I need to do it but again uh, it's a tip for you and an option uh, so if you want to get a very realistic look uh, you need to make the inking if you want to get only the um, to two-toned or different uh, colors effect you don't need to make the inking okay so the last one uh, you know uh, I think that uh, it's a good technique um, for making some Christmas presents uh, not maybe the cards but um, uh, I'm going to create some notebook covers and to present them to my relatives and uh, nowadays uh, the rustic style is very popular in Russia and in Belarus and I guess that in Europe and the USA so um, I think that if you put, make the um, uh, such kind of a cover for your notebook you can even uh, buy it in one dollar store for instance and then just cover the um, printed um, cover with your um, self-made wooden cardboard and then just place only a picture or put some Christmas wreath I think it will be a very good uh, very cool present Alter Joe, I'm sorry, we don't, uh, I don't know your name, so, <gasps> I, and I also guess I'll be the friends on Facebook, but you're writing that you don't have Facebook, and what is your real name? Maybe you will share with us. Okay, I'm going to cut it. someone uh, repeats this technique on your Christmas projects please share with me you can find me on Facebook and please tag me while posting your um, projects using such kind of the background I really want to see what uh, the results you get John <gasps> nice to meet you John okay this is our base so then you can take your um, another cardstock and you just adhere it at this stage I'm only going to use some embellishments some Christmas embellishments maybe not a very traditional one but I like using the leaves this is the leaves by Prima Flowers. They have launched them uh, last winter, I guess. And these flowers, they are so perfect for Christmas projects too. Oh, thank you, John. And, 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 and. You see my initial card it is more white this one is more narrow but it's okay you can regulate the amount of the embellishments you are using and um, 
Not recently, I have started again using my dies. I have bought my first uh, die cutting machine about, I guess, five years, and it um, was kept without any uh, job for ages. And now I have started using the dies again. No, Rika, it is uh, paper lifting. <laughs> my my name is, on Facebook is Elena Olinevich, as it is. Um, it was announced because paper lifting it is Rika. I uh, all the time uh, I applied to her because I know that she can help me, and because she she's doing live show almost. Thank you, thank you. I don't know what what um, what was to say. Uh, leaf dice. It, it this this dice or this one. Okay, I will explain everything. This one it is um, uh, the uh, Christmas ornaments by Spellbinders. This one, and uh, you see that they are, they have the shape of the uh, ornament, and also the. Ah, <gasps> and also this one. You see, and. Um, for the second part, <sighs> and this. So maybe there are too many of them, but let's try. Oh, okay, John. I will then uh, add you to the friends. Thank you, thank you. Uh, those spellbinders dies they're brand new they have launched them about maybe a month a month ago yes they're a new one okay so I need to place my leaves white leaves by Prima and um, I'm going to use where I have put it another strong adhesive I like very much it is dots by scrapbook adhesive and you see quite a, an easy to use form so you take this one it is it is absolutely clear you see so you just put it on your embellishment it is also have a 3d dimension and uh, it's very uh, good adhesive strong adhesive so I place it it on onto the middle I'm taking one more I'm doing it like this. Now I need to take uh, the ribbon. I have worked with the green one. So now I'm trying the lilac, the violet lilac. It's not deep purple. Can you see that? It's not a silver. <laughs> okay. So I'm just making a very simple bow. It would be better to, 
to use this staple for it but I think that let's try the the dots by Scrapbook Exclusive I'm fixing it in the middle yes it is lilac color also my favorite one you see and I'm fixing it in the middle of my card base now I'm going to I have forgotten to take another adhesive okay I'm just applying very accurate but frankly speaking you don't need to be very accurate with applying the uh, glue because you see there are the glue the drops of the glue but I'm going to use the glitter so this is okay because everything will be hidden later again Oh, sorry. So, I fixed them. And I just need to find a place for them. I will hide this one there. Again. I'm using my strong adhesive and I need to find a place for this one so you see that the leaf is um, making a dimension that is why I'm taking again the dots it is the uh, adhesive drop it has a 3D dimensional effect and it's very easy to put it instead of using the foam pads. Really love this product. Yes, Karen, you have already. <laughs> came back okay you see I'm trying to make some texture and dimension so I'm using those dots Oh, thank you Karen okay and 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 I'm going to add uh, the flowers and between the flowers I'm going to add one more one more leaf I think I, I will put it there again I'm using the dots quite easy while using the dots to uh, to keep the dimension and you still can fix it as you like and just to be maybe more fast but not sure it's easier to make it uh, those two flowers I need to separate them with something so I'm taking 
I'm taking. Okay, let's try to use maybe some lace. I have uh... Good night, Rika. Thank you for helping me today to do everything. You see, this is crochet. I <laughs> it was not me who did it. Anyway, it is very beautiful. It is handmade, and I bought it from the girl. And I think that I'm going to add it there. Maybe it's too wide, so I will cut the part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Maybe there. Yes, I think it's better. And I will hide the other the other flower there. So I think that is all for the embellishments and all you need to do now is to to create a more festive look and uh, in this case I'm going to add the glitter <laughs> thank you thank you Rika and good night so just some final touches and we have almost finished I'm always too long too long with making the cards and other projects I'm paying too much uh, attention to the details that is my feature I'm sorry <laughs> I don't know is it good or not but 3D gloss gel also by Prima Marketing uh, very cool for many many uh, options and I'm going to apply it on some areas of my embellishments and it will work as an it as an adhesive for the uh, for the glitter and also I need to hide those um, glue dots remember I was not very um, accurate and you can put it on the background too you can uh, apply it with the finger or with the brush or with any tool that you like also it can work as a <laughs> thank you Julian uh, uh, so uh, these three jellies also can be used as a strong adhesive too but it needs more time to dry but it can dry everything firmly so I'm putting it over 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 there and there and even I will put more because um, I'm going to add not only the glitter, I'm going to add the flower soft and I will show you. And don't forget about the, the background. Okay, I think that it's enough. So, I'm taking my uh, glass glitter by Prima Marketing. Art ingredients, really cool, uh, really um, useful for your Christmas projects, but also you can use it all uh, year round. And I'm just sprinkling it over my card.
you can press on those parts to hold it and then I'm just removing the excess you see the shimmering and the glittering and if you think that you have applied too much of it so you just just scratch it and you see that the uh, gel medium is now looks uh, white but when it dries it will be absolutely it is absolutely clear so uh, you will see only the glitter with no um, with no signs of the white okay okay and the final touch is to add in this flower soft flower soft i really like it i'm using it quite rare but i always um, each christmas time i'm starting i remember that i have a flower soft and i'm starting to use it like crazy so i'm applying uh, more of gel medium on the top of the embellishments and even on some other areas on the top of the glitter and remember that when the gel medium dries it's going to be uh, transparent so you can you won't you don't need to be afraid of it I have forgotten about the background I didn't apply anything on it and and this is the flower soft I have oh you see does anyone have it in their stuff absolutely amazing thing especially for for those who lo loves flowers the florals motifs this is how it looks I you see it looks like the snow but the colorful snow and all you need to do is sprinkle it on the areas covered with the gel medium in my case three gel glossy <laughs> I also have some different colors, but I I use it only on Christmas, frankly speaking. So now it's a good chance for you, uh, Julian, to use it. So, and again, using your finger or a palette knife, a spatula, just press a bit to fix it and I am removing the excess so this is the finished look tomorrow uh, those white where is it? Those white uh, gel medium uh, becomes uh, will become transparent, and it will be very beautiful. I hope. So this is my card for today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'm happy that you have liked it, that you have enjoyed it. Uh, it was a bit slowly, <laughs> but I think that you get many ideas what you can you what you can do with your paints, with your inks, how to to make a resting feeling, 
uh, how to use your dyes, your glitter and even the flower soft and especially the ribbons I love the ribbons so much I'm trying to use them on each of my project and uh, if you have any questions I'm here to answer it very unusual card <laughs> thank you Julian for me uh, the best uh, compliment is to say that I have made something unusual because it's an issue for me to uh, be distinctive and I'm happy that you have noticed it uh, if you have any questions I'm open to answer it at the moment or you can write me anytime on Facebook send me a message and I'm willing to help to everyone and uh, also you can sign for my YouTube channel uh, what else <laughs> I feel a bit tired because it is more than a midnight and thank you for those who have joined me today um, I hope that you will use these techniques on your Christmas uh, projects and uh, I really suggest you to make some notebook covers with these wooden planks and what else? Thank you for joining me today again. <laughs> I will repeat every, every and each word. So, I hope that uh, this show is not the last one for me and uh, that you will join me on my next shows. And thank you, Karen. Thank you, um, Rika, for helping me. Thank you, ladies, that you were with me. And uh, please share your projects if you... Uh, repeat something there. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. So I think that if you if you don't have questions, I'm going to say a goodbye. <laughs> come back soon. <laughs> okay, yes, I will come back. And I'm going to say you good night because it is good night. It is midnight in my place. And and one more time, my card. The wooden, uh, the wooden blanks I planks I didn't use. I'm going to create some. Ah, oh, I need to show like this. I'm going to create some more projects, so you can check them on my Facebook page. And good night, everyone. Okay, I'm going to switch off because my hubby he is waiting for me when we are going to sleep because we have to wake up in um, almost six hours. So I'm saying goodbye to everyone and thank you. Good night. <laughs>